Oluwa Sheyi Ibidoto looks back at when it started out and how much improvements have been recorded over the years. <laughs> So I've been coming to Moshin right from around 86, 1986 I mean. And Moshin has been existing even before then. And um, Wotango is, is improving concerning materials and tools and machines. Like when we started there were no tools. That's our first tackle, our first problem. Thinking of how we get tools and machines. But thank God, within the mid-90s, it was like everything break through. And we started having last, the most shoes, started having machines, even though they are second-handed, but they are fine for our work there. But nowadays, even we even have new machines. But the only issue is finance. That's the only thing that is holding back shoe industry, or let me say leather industry in Nigeria. And there's a lot of improvements because um, we get used to work. It's a thing of constant consistency. When you are consistent on anything craft, you are meant to be good because it's a technical known how. So the technique is unique. We, we already had the technique. So the improvement is about the finishing, which almost everybody, which everybody tries to polish himself within every other work. So you try to test where you can see we have a natural master, which is the imported. So these are, these are our copy. That's what we really want to work towards. And for that reason, every day by day, guys are getting better in terms of finishing and the technical aspect of making shoes. Although they find themselves in a common vicinity, there are no efforts to aggregate figures on the quantity of footwear being made here. However, going by their testimonies, the shoemakers seem to have good reasons to continue in business. In a week, if we have a lot of demand, we can produce like 100 to 200 slippers in a week. Uh, and if it is true, you can produce up to 50 million. So uh, we have customers that buy and resell, and we have the one that's, that buy and use. And we have the one that buy and sell it online too. I'm a customer, 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 I'm Despite the importation of most of the raw materials for shoe making, particularly leather, there appears to be a consensus that Nigerian made leathers are far better than the imported ones. This kind of leather, we call this leather lining, although we used to buy it at a machine here but it came all the way from north. The one of uh, foreign is costly more than the, the one sold in Nigeria. But we are, when we are talking in terms of durability, uh, the one in Nigeria so is quality enough, you know, is durable. I will recommend made in Nigerian leather for shoe factories because over the years, it has been tested and discovered that they are very good. What we lack is only the machinery to process them to the extent that they will look very fine. But in terms of durability, Nigerian leathers are very durable and I recommend that. So why buy imported leather? It's simply because, uh, you know, for we to go for the, the one at abroad, the price, you know, many people know it, many people, many customers knows the one from abroad. They know it quite all right. They know the difference between so both of them. By the time we construct both, so they know the one from our abroad because it shines. So the shining is there. Which is great, you are only Tebara, Tebi Shibata. Tebara, Lonsin, T. Dusty Bagbonsi, go to the Queer D office, 
le manki ke fi ni beauty ma jade pada be nigerian leader e ma se ko fun mola to the extent gbo ko poni se ko tu se kini ko so pada ko si ya pada don fun leader yin le ma poni se for two days or three days One noticeable trend here is the use of foreign labels on some of the shoes made by the shoemakers instead of their own brand name. It's a situation ascribed to the preferences of customers. Many people, when they buy Nigerian things, they would like to put uh, made in Italy, made in Spain, made in Brazil. But uh, I don't think that is proper. So, but to me, I normally place made in Nigeria and people admire it. Our people too need to understand. What we do here is original. You understand? It's, I can be sure of it. it's original. But until our people just don't value it, they want to buy. Because I have people that walk shoes there, they take it abroad, and our people still go and buy it down here and say important. While the increasing cost of raw materials is a worry for most of these workers, epileptic electricity supply is a major concern as the cost of private power generation remains a constant drain on their scarce resources. One of the major challenges we have is light. There is no constant light, constant light here. So we do rely on generator. As you can see, you can see generator working. So we need to have like four to three gel. So if one breaks down, we start another one. We work about 12 hours in a day, or even more than 12 hours sometimes. Sometimes we do overnight job to meet up with our customer. customer. But if there is light, our, our, um, the business will still be more moving fine than this. If there is no power, the electricity will mean, there's no, guys will be idle. You can see here now, we have been working on generators since. So that's one of those things that will make things cost. Because the cost of diesel, the time taken, if you added them together, it's, it seems as if we don't want to sell to our people, but not. If government can, I, I wish and I pray, we have an uninterrupted electricity. That will help Nigeria a lot. <laughs> 